The first time that I tried a Merlot and Petite Verdot blend, I was having some stuffed peppers. I wanted to let you reminisce with me about that wonderful experience. So I'm gonna make some stuffed peppers for you today. And I have in my bowl two pounds of meatloaf mix. Now I like to use meatloaf mix because it's a blend of beef, pork, and veal. It just gives a really nice tender product. And I'd rather use that than a lot of beef. It's totally up to your preference. You can use two pounds of ground beef if you prefer. You can even use ground chicken in this, and I've done that many times. I added to that about a cup of cooked rice. So not a cup of rice cooked, a cup of cooked rice. Now I wanna add some wonderful flavorings here. So I've got some parsley, a little oregano, and a little basil. And I just wanna sprinkle that evenly. I don't like to clump all of my herbs when I put them in the pan, because if I do that, they're going to end up in a clump in my meatball mixture. And then I wanna add a little bit of garlic. Now let's just kinda of get in there with the fingers as well and spread that around. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a very garlicky stuffed pepper. And then some Parmesan cheese, and I like to use fresh grated for this. Now the next thing is two eggs. I make meatloaf, meatballs out of this, and I also do stuffed peppers. The only difference is when I make meatloaf and I make meatballs, I don't use the rice. Instead, I use a panko crumb. Now we have our two eggs, our wonderful meat, and all of those great seasonings. And of course, our rice. Now let's just get in there and really mix it up. When you're making meatloaf or meatballs or stuffed peppers, you don't want to overmix the meat. Don't mix and mix and mix until you feel like you've beaten it to death. It's already gone, I'm really sorry. Just make sure that you blend it through. I say on the recipe, it's serving for six. It's really kind of serving for six plus a little bit of leftover. You wanna make sure that you stuff it really hard down inside so you don't have a lot of pockets. If you have pockets and your meat is fatty, you'll end up with a huge pocket of fat that really has no way to escape out of your pepper. Now, if ever I have a little extra, I either just pop it on the top of one of the peppers or I'll make little meatballs and set them down inside my pan to roast right along with this. In a nice hot pan, heat up some oil and add some onions to saute. Add some tomato paste, then herbs, and deglaze with wine. Add a 28 ounce can of tomato puree and two cups of water. Blend that sauce, add the peppers, and pop it in a 350 degree oven for one and a half hours with the lid on. These are so wonderful. And with this wine, just incredible, oh my goodness. Gotta taste just a little piece of this. Mm, let's pour out this wine. A little Merlot and Petit Verdot. You can see that beautiful color of the Petit Verdot coming through, that intense purplishness in the color. Oh, and the, oh, the aroma is amazing. Mm, get a little blackberry and... You know, these flavors that you get on wines aren't because they put them in wines. They are simply what comes out of that grape once it's produced into wine. It's just amazing. Oh yeah, together, wow, what a combination. Just what I remembered. So I hope you enjoyed taking a little trip down memory lane with me.